So what kind of car do you drive? One like this, or more like this one. Or how about this? Or perhaps like this one. Of course, the ultimate CO2 saver is biking. And you thought I was gonna say walking, didn't you? Well, we all exhale CO2 when we breathe, each and every time. But on a bike, we can get there farther and faster. Now, not everybody can switch to a more fuel efficient vehicle right away. Thank you. But we can all do our parts to conserve gas and to be more fuel efficient with the vehicle that we already own. For instance, you can take off all the extra accessories that create weight and a drag. Extra weight? Who said that? Not that kind of drag, this kind. Like bike racks that you aren't using and rooftop clamshell containers that you haven't pulled off since your last vacation. This can improve efficiency by two to 5%. I check my tire pressure about every month or around every 500 miles. Bolivia, stop letting air out of the tire. Anyway, properly inflated and aligned tires save anywhere from three to 10% in fuel efficiency. Now, according to the EPA, go by the PSI that's shown on the sticker in the front door panel, not on the sidewall of the tire. Now inside the car itself, I've removed all the extra weight that creates a drag on my driving. Like old phone books and winter stuff that I didn't need once spring rolled around. <laughs> I probably only need one umbrella, don't you think? Every 100 pounds of extra weight, that can decrease fuel efficiency by 2%. Some people even take their extra car seats out of their cars. And did I mention the sample floor tiles that have been in my car since I remodeled three years ago? No, oh, thank you. Oh my, that's about 75 pounds worth. You didn't think I was gonna show you my actual weight, did you? The average American drives about 12,500 miles a year. Me, about 5,000. And that dramatically reduces my CO2 footprint. Several strategies help me drive less like combining car trips. Not in a chaotic way, but in a thoughtfully laid out route to reduce backtracking along the way. I keep a lightweight cooler in the back of my car too, just in case I need to stop at a store and have another place to go before going home. As a business consultant, my office is in my home, but I carpool whenever I can. Oh, these local like with my neighbor to the really farmer's market yeah, or with a friend to a fundraiser will make a big difference. Let's are we there yet or to the beach with my buddies or to a party with my peeps let's go party now your own driving behavior can account for some seriously poor fuel efficiency let me show you some better choices for instance warming up the car that's a misnomer the engine only needs a few seconds to really move the oil about to lubricate the parts. According to the Car Talk Brothers, for most cars, you can just turn the engine on and go if the temperature is about freezing. I love this feedback feature on my dash. I can see immediately how my driving behavior affects my MPGs. If I maintain a steady speed, accelerate before I get to the hill, coast to stops, it may be let up a bit on the gas whenever the engine revs, then my miles per gallon goes way up. When I'm on the highway, going 55 or 60 is definitely more fuel efficient than going 65 or 70. The EPA suggests that these simple changes in driving behavior can improve fuel efficiency anywhere from 5 to 33 percent. And I turn off my engine when idling, not when I'm in regular traffic like this but when I suspect that I'll be idling for longer than 10 seconds or so. That's the break-even point for restarting the engine. I use my heater and AC sparingly and at low settings. Running the AC or the defroster on max can reduce your MPGs by up to 25%. A word of warning though, if you opt to open your car window instead of using the AC, it can create significant drag. If you're going at higher speeds, that is. If you're going under 35 miles per hour, it doesn't make that big of a difference. And you can improve your fuel economy at the gas station itself. Hi. Hi. 
see. Would you fill it up? Yep. Thanks. When pumping gasoline, use the slow mode to reduce vapor creation inside the tank itself. And don't top off. Not only is it against the law here, but chances are that itty bit of gas that you're trying to eke out to round up to the nearest dollar, it's actually being drawn back into the station storage tank by a vapor line, not being put into your gas tank, even though it looks like it is. So you're paying for gas that you're not really getting, not to mention the hazardous spillage that can occur. Thanks, Bill. Yeah, thanks for coming in today. Yeah. See you again. You bet. Have All a right. good day. You too. Now, some people drive miles out of their way to go to a gas station that has prices maybe three to five cents lower than everybody else. Well, on a fill-up, they might save, say, about 50 cents. But when you think about the gas and the time that they use to get there and back, well, does it make a whole lot of sense? Probably not. And lastly, keep your engine tuned. A tuned engine can improve fuel efficiency by 4%. Check your oil and your air filter at the same time. Did you know that a clean air filter can save you about 10% on fuel? Looks real good, ma'am. And you do too. Aw, oh, shucks. <laughs> and of course, there's lots of public transit options, like taking the bus, or light rail, or even van pooling to work. Your local provider probably has an online trip planner. And for those of you who travel, try some of these. I take the train whenever possible, instead of driving or flying someplace. And I take multi-person shuttles instead of single-person taxi cabs from train stations and airports to get to my final destination. And if I absolutely positively have to rent a car, I rent the most fuel efficient one that they have. And I hope you'll do more walking with your own two feet. And sometimes you don't even have to do the walking. I'm Jean Bauman, bringing you the tools to be sustainable today. I'm an everyday gal making my everyday choices count and you can too. Hey, can I keep you in my garage? I'm a good cook. <laughs> All right. I think the answer is yes. Uh -huh.